Hi, this is Ibadi NX from The Candid Frame, and this week I thought I'd talk about graphics. I think when we think about creating photographs with very strong graphic lines and shapes, we're, we're thinking about doing pictures like architecture or close-ups, but I think having a sense of the graphic can really help us when we're making photographs of many things, including images where we're taking urban landscapes or even street photography in which we're including graphic graphic elements in the frame as well as people and I wanted to start off with this one shot here which I, I thought was just a, a really a lovely shot by Kelly Vincent Gibbons this this shot is very graphic it's all about line and shape but especially about about color um, what makes the 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 the, the photograph so strong is that you have this strong repeating line these sort of black bars from what I I assume is is a bench so there's this pattern that's created from left to right as you go through the frame and what he does wonderfully here is that he breaks the rhythm of the pattern which is one of the most important things you can ever do when you're photographing patterns if you just photograph a pattern and there's nothing to really break it up it's the image can tend to be really flat it's it's begging for something else to sort of break that repetition to create a, a point of contrast and these fallen leaves here really help create that and the fact that the leaves are a really bright and vibrant yellow and red that contrasts with the dark of the of the metal is just fantastic and i think a nice added touch is these beads of water that are on the bench because it makes that it gives it gives the bench texture and otherwise it would just be this sort of uniform black grayish tone but the beads of water add an element a further element of contrast which works really really nicely but what makes this image and takes it to the exceptional level is that the fallen leaves that have fallen below the bench can be seen blurred out in the background had this just been gray or black or just dark, uh, the image would certainly have been missing something. It would have just been about the contrast between the leaf, the leaves and the and the bench here. And having these blurred colors in the background uh, provide the image a great sense of depth and another point of contrast. It, it just makes the image work really beautifully and it really elevates it from just being another another picture of a leaf that may be laying on some sort of um, object, be it a bench, being it a street, be it a fence, whatever it is. But I wanna take that to another level and I wanna talk about using these repeating patterns with the inclusion of people. Uh, this looks like it uh, may have been in either a subway or a um, near an office building. But look at the strong repeating pattern of these squares uh, that exist throughout the background of the frame. The squares repeat themselves over and over, and they're a really strong graphic element in, in, in the photograph. When, what makes them all the better is the fact that they're translucent. So you're getting getting this light that's passing through. So, so you not only get this light that's passing through these, these squares, but you also get the color and the texture of these blocks of glass that add a, a really wonderful element to the scene. By Julian Thunick here, including the human figure, it breaks up that repetition just like the leaf in the previous image does. It not only provides a sense of scale and gives us a sense of the human relationship to the to the to the scene that surrounds them, but it breaks up that rhythm of all these squares appearing over and over and over and over again. Just photographing a pattern in and of itself without something that serves as a point of contrast can make the image rather boring. It may be an interesting graphic shot. But there's nothing for us to really sort of sink our teeth into. And having, in this case, a human figure really adds a sense of dynamism to, to the shot, especially the fact that he catches this person in full stride so that their their legs create this sort of triangle. And it is serves as a, a, a shape. This triangle is a shape that is a contrast to all these squares. Uh, it's 
it's just a, a wonderful element and he and he times it just right so that he's photographed right here in this space where he's fully framed by these window blocks had he been photographed in this area here or partly here we would have lost some if not all of that human figure and the impact or the potential impact that he has for this shot would have been completely lost now here's a shot here that's very similar in that it has these blue blocks of tiles in the background but it's it's very different because the pattern here is very localized we have it on this area of wall but when I'm thinking about a graphic shot I'm not just thinking about repeating patterns like this you can take a look at the opening into this wall and you can see the strong shape that's created here also you have this sort of implied di diagonal or a horizontal line by just the way the wall is sort of converging towards this point um, even though we don't get to see the top of the wall this line right here helps to guide our eye to this area here so we kind of we see this shadow here where, where this large point of of contrast so our eye almost immediately goes here but then our eye is sort of guided here to this presence of this other shadow here with this person in, uh, with a backpack about to walk into the entryway so what's interesting about it is that the setting itself is very graphic but the shadows themselves become another graphic element even though they're they're obviously people we're not looking at them as individual people we're looking at them strictly as a graphic element within a graphic scene and uh, uh, Jimmy uh, Dovholt here uh, does a wonderful job of making all that happen I think that I think, I think this is him here uh, because he calls this some kind of selfie, was absolutely essential to make this, this photograph work. If his shadow had not been here, you would have had this expanse of negative space where there wouldn't have been anything going on. And the only strong graphic element would have been this figure here uh, on the left-hand side of the frame. And all this negative space would have just been sort of dead. And having this shadow here and this shadow here creates a wonderful balance, which is something you're always, always trying to pursue when you're thinking graphically about a shot. So many people will, will go out into the street and, and sometimes think that they haven't found anything very interesting to shoot, especially if they gravitate towards people. And I often suggest to them, don't worry about the people just observe the shadows and see how their shadows play with the environment and sometimes it opens up to you uh, a whole host of opportunities that you might not otherwise consider and you're making pictures of people but now you're thinking of people as as a graphic element within the, your whole composition which can, which can make a really interesting photograph here's a shot by Simon uh, Hossein and this is a perfect example here about using strong graphic lines, using strong diagonals, horizontals, vertical lines. I mean, they pervade this entire shot. And this human figure here, again, provides a bit of context. But they also, the way that that person is standing there, also builds on the repetition of line that exists throughout the frame, especially these metal girders that jut out from the building throughout the frame, and even the columns here that exist here. Even though we know that this is a human figure, the way that he's standing there, the way his body is there, it just becomes another set of lines and shapes that complement everything else that's, that's happening here. And this expansive use of negative space, uh, for me, really works. A lot of people might be concerned that it's too much negative space. But when you think about it in terms of a contrast between dark and light, uh, this really works here. I think that the presence of this building here helps to balance out the entire composition. I think if this was if this was just the only thing in the frame and we didn't have this large counterpoint, imagine that this was just an expanse of white, um, I don't think the image would have worked as well. There's something about the presence of this of this building that helps sort of contain our eye into this area because our eye seems to like move up and down here and it stops on the figure here but if we had too much white space I don't think it would have worked as well 
Um, and, and the way that it's just rendered as this very high contrast black and white, it really, really works. But again, let's think about it the way these images are just working graphically. It's it's not just, oh, there's a guy at the top of this of this structure and just taking a picture of them. It's really thinking about that person as an element in the frame, as an element in the composition. Sometimes we see we see a person and we're making a photograph and we're completely oblivious to everything around them. And and more often than not, it's the things that are around a person that really make the shot. And they may and those things may actually be the shot. It may not actually be the person itself who's the most interesting part of the photograph, but rather the environment in which they're present. And if we can take a look at it from that perspective, we can use this human figure as a sort of catalyst or for a trigger to help draw the viewer's attention to a specific area of the frame. Now here's a shot by Jeff Schemmer and the graphic sense of this image may be a little less dramatic as some of the other shots that that we had here but if you take a look at the the crosswalk uh, the way the lines of the street form these very strong diagonal lines uh, throughout the frame is is helping to direct our eye to the intersection here where this person with the red umbrella and you couldn't ask for a more bitter color than this red umbrella here but all of these lines if you take a look at it it's all these strong diagonal vertical uh, lines that exist through all these things that are seen converging and I love the blurring of the cars here I think that's one of the key things that makes this image work because it adds a sense of motion of energy even the subject with the umbrella is slightly blurred because his right leg is slightly blurred and it's not not tack sharp and it makes all of this sort of a perfect setting for the presence of the person here with the umbrella. Imagine the shot without the umbrella in this figure. We would take a look at this shot and graphically it might seem like, oh, it's kind of interesting, but we would be thinking it needs something else. And that something else is the figure uh, for the umbrella. So sometimes I'll, I'll be out photographing myself and I'll find what I call a potential, a potential scene like, like this where I'll look at it and I'll see all these graphic elements and I see all these sort of muted colors and I'll think, huh, this is a really interesting opportunity, but it isn't finished yet. It may be 90% there and I just have to wait. And so many of my shots, I've had to wait 20 or 30, sometimes even 40 minutes for that one element to come in the frame. But when I have that feeling in my gut, that is telling me there is something here. There's a potential here. Rather than running around all over, all over the place hunting for images, uh, I'll just, I'll just stand there in place and just wait. And uh, surprisingly, there's something that comes along that helps complete the shot. It may not make it the best shot in the world, but it would make it better. But it makes it better than what I initially anticipated when I when I witnessed the scene. So I I commend Jeff for for seeing the scene, and uh, and waiting for for something special to happen here. Well, thanks to all the people who've contributed images over the past weeks. It's really exciting to see some of the great work that's being contributed, not only in the United States, but all over the world. We're already over a thousand people uh, who have been part of this group, and it's grown much faster than I had anticipated. But I'm really pleased to be seeing this this work and uh, to be able to give my insights as a photographer to, to you. So I hope you, you find it helpful. Um, if you found the Candid Frame through this YouTube channel, but you don't know what the Candid Frame is, well, it's a podcast which features conversations with some of the world's best photographers. And uh, you can find us at thecandidframe.com. And it's a place where you're going to be inspired by the conversations by just some amazing shooters from every genre of photography and manageable. So, so check it out at thecandidframe.com. And uh, that's it for me this week. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time.